Unmute, Bev. Thank you, sorry. Let us worship God, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, Lord of heaven and earth, we praise you for your greatness. Your wisdom is seen in all your works. Your grace and truth are revealed in Jesus Christ, your Son. Your presence and power are given to us through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, blessed Trinity, we worship and adore you forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Our first hymn this morning is 111, Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. The words are on your screen. Um, in the third verse, um, I might, if the mood takes me, go off on a flight of fancy. So see how we go. <laughs> sunny day but rather chilly. Um, I just wanted to let you know that that you will well you will know you have received an email um, about returning to church. Uh, please read it. It's really an important email that you should read because it gives you some instructions. It's a bit like <laughs> it's it's there's lots of instructions but that's the way we have to go to keep us all safe. So if you can just read it and um, take note of what is said. We have sent the email to those who don't have, who are not on the internet, we've sent that by mail. So everybody should, have re should receive it in the next couple of days. Uh, when we do return to church, of course, we will need some volunteers again, more than just a reader and someone to do the prayers. We don't need morning tea, but um, I'll be asking Gaitland to send out her usual email that she sends uh, this week so that you have the chance to volunteer for two weeks' time. Now, next week, we are having our trial service in the church. If you want to come, Peter's suggestion is that you email me 
Um, we are happy that not everybody comes. The service will be online as usual, um, but we just want to give it a little trial first in the church to see how it works before we invite you all back on the 19th. So if you want to come, just send me a, just send me a short email. Thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Let's come to God with our prayers of confession. In penitence and faith, let us confess our sins to Almighty God. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hear then Christ's word of grace to us. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. The first reading this morning comes from Psalms 45, 10 to 17. Hear, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house, and the king will desire your beauty. Since he is your Lord, bow down to him. The people of Tyre will seek your favour with gifts, the richest of the people with all kinds of wealth. The princess is decked in her chamber with golden, gold woven robes. In many coloured robes she is led to the king. Behind her the virgins, her companions, follow. With joy and gladness they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. In the place of ancestors, you, O king, shall have sons. You will make them princes in all the earth. I will cause your name to be celebrated in all generations. Therefore, the peoples will praise you forever and ever. The second reading is from Matthew 11. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We have played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are, that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Live hard, die young, leave a good-looking corpse. Life is short, play it hard. Three statements there about the meaning of life, statements that different people would claim to be the basis of their lives, statements that they sought to live by. 
If you were given the opportunity to claim a sentence, an idea that gave your life its meaning, I wonder what you'd choose. I'm sure many would choose the Dead Poet Society, Carpe Diem, Seize the Day, or for the 21st century consumer, perhaps shop until you drop appeals. Life's a bitch and then you die, is a common enough view. Well, life is like banging your head against a wall. It feels good when it stops. As we come out of COVID-19, people all around the world are making decisions about what their life is meant to be, how it's meant to be lived. A lot of people are thinking about the sentences that would sum up what their life is all about. Jesus of Nazareth offered in that reading that we've just heard from Matthew's Gospel, a sentence of what he had to offer other people. He said very famously, Come unto me, all ye who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. They're powerful words. We use them in funeral services and they're relevant to all age groups, not just those at the end of life, feeling tired and weighed down by heavy burdens or uh, heavy burdens and difficult life circumstances come to people at all of life's stages. People who labour, people who are heavy laden, abound in our world, don't they? And these are the people, including us, to whom Jesus addresses this little story. My yoke is easy. Doesn't mean we're free from sin and guilt. In fact, Jesus, interestingly enough, in his message was against things that even the religious leaders of his time didn't see as a problem. But this uh, passage, it seems to me, speaks with great clarity of of how we can live. It was Paul Tillich, the great 20th century theologian, who pointed me to what I think is a wonderful meaning of these words and their relevance to each of us. You see, the burden, according to Tillich, that Jesus wanted to lift from the heavy laden, which is, as I said, each of us, was the burden of religion. The yoke of the law that the religious leaders of his time had imposed on the people had them all at breaking point. What Jesus was saying to the people is that he offered the power to overcome religion, to overcome law. And the yoke that he gave the people was his way, the way that transcended all that they had previously thought important. And so why then are those words important to us if they spoke to such a specific religious context of Israel in the first century? The scribes and the Pharisees are long gone, aren't they? But nonetheless, there is an old saying, isn't there? The more things change, the more they stay the same. Even though the Pharisees are long gone, it's a natural human tendency to turn religious practice into work and to drudgery. It's a human failing that we want to, strangely, turn liberation into oppression. We want to turn freedom into fear. We want to turn hope into anxiety. Jesus' words, come unto me, all ye who labour, are words for our day too. When you look at the religion offered by many of the Christian churches in 21st century Australia, I think you'll see what I mean. Fundamentalism has a view that Only the in are right, everybody else is wrong. A lot of churches are based around a social conformity that means you have to live the life that the rest of the church lives. You have to uh, follow a whole set of edicts and rules for, for living. And even our Uniting Church has its own version of Phariseeism, a tendency to calling people towards hard work and fanaticism and to a work salvation believing exactly the right things to remain in the in-group. It's a funny irony, of course, that even people in cultures who escape the church find something else to labour under. Those countries that uh, went to a communist form of government in the 
hundreds soon found themselves under as oppressive a yoke as the Pharisees and scribes that have offered. Marxism weighed people down and uh, put a stumbling blocks in their path. People labour and toil under so many things. And so Jesus' message does not change. As we shape our lives for the post-COVID period, we would do well to listen to Jesus' call to his people, Jesus' offering of a yoke that's easy and a burden that's light. For that is what we claim Jesus can do, free us from all those things, free us from religious persecution, free us from the religious law that would weigh us down. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I'm sure you're all aware of the ancient agricultural practices that had uh, beasts of burden wearing yokes. The yokes would enable them to do the work that the farmer required. The yoke kept them in place. The yoke weighed down on them and gave them the uh, oppressed life that you expect a beast of burden to have. Interestingly, Jesus' statement doesn't offer merely a qualitative difference, not just a little easier. It's not just a little lighter what he has to offer. In fact, what Jesus offers as a yoke for us, as we discussed last week, is actually all about freedom. It's above the law that others offer. It replaces the toiling and the laboring with a profound rest in our souls. What Jesus has to offer is a sense of alignment with the, uh, the universe. What Jesus offers is a purple purposefulness that means our lives are richly and well lived. I've come that you might find life, life in all of its abundance. That's what John's Jesus says, and it aligns with Matthew. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, you have promised rest to the weary and relief to the heavy laden. Hear the prayers we bring for your people. We pray for those weighed down by the hardships of daily life, for those who live in poverty without adequate food or shelter, for those in places of war, civilians, soldiers and refugees. 
relieved their burdens that all your people may live in dignity and peace. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those wearied by responsibility in your church, for those without the resources to fulfill their tasks, those whose dreams are shattered, whose vision others do not share. Renew their spirits, that they may find their strength in you. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those exhausted by overwork or the responsibility of care, for carers of young children, of the disabled and the infirm, for those unable to provide for their families or themselves. Lighten their loads, that they may know your encouragement and support. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those burdened by guilt, self-doubt, anxiety or despair, for those unable to leave behind the past, for those afraid of the present and without hope for the future. Lift these weights from them, that they may let go of their fears. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We think of those in our congregation who are in need. We pray for those worn down by pain, grief, or by a sense of uselessness, for those whom society does not value or want, for the lonely, the friendless, the sick and the dying. Soothe their hurt and calm their distress, that they may find their peace in you. Gracious God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Our next hymn is 536, set to a, an English tune, an English folk tune, we sang a few weeks ago, Oh Whaley Whaley. I hope you like the tune. It's a lovely tune full of yearning, which I think fits the words, particularly the last verse. <laughs> Christ our Lord invites us to his table, all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Let us pray. Be present, risen Lord Jesus, as you were with your disciples, and make yourself known to us in the breaking of the bread, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hear the words of the institution of this sacrament, as recorded by the Apostle Paul. For I received from the Lord 
what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it for the remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so, according to our Saviour's command, we set apart this bread and this wine for this holy supper to which he calls us. And now we come to God with our prayers of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Thanks and praise, glory and honour are rightly yours, our Lord and God. For you alone are worthy. In time beyond our dreaming, you brought forth life out of darkness. And in the love of Christ, your Son, you set man and woman at the heart of your creation. And so we praise you with the faithful of every time and place, <clears throat> joining with choirs of angels and the whole creation in the eternal hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you that you called a covenant people to be a light to the nations. Through Moses, you taught us to love your law, and in the prophets, you cried out for justice. In the fullness of your mercy, you became one with us in Jesus Christ, who gave himself up for us on the cross. You make us alive together with him, that we may rejoice in his presence and share his peace. By water and the Spirit, you open the kingdom to all who believe and welcome us to your table, for by grace we are saved through faith. With this bread and this cup, we do as our Saviour has commanded. We celebrate the redemption he has won for us. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Make us one with him, one with each other, and one in ministry in the world, until at last we feast with him in the kingdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in your holy church, all honour and glory are yours, Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. Blessing and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray together. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the cup that we take, the bread that we break, broken and taken in the name of the Christ. The body of Christ, which was broken for you. Can I invite you to take the bread there at home and uh, take, share this holy meal. This is the body of Christ that was broken for you. Amen. Take and eat. The blood of Christ for you, Michael. The blood of Christ. Take and drink. And let us pray. Father, we thank you that you have fed us with this sacrament, united us in Christ, and fed us to be your loyal disciples in all the earth. 
We pray your blessing as we go forth from this place, having shared the sacrament together. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final hymn, 545, Shout for Joy! Exclamation mark, written by the Scottish hymn writer John Bell. It moves along with quite a cracking pace. So uh, join me as we as we uh, move out of church quickly. <laughs> of the Lord of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, this day and forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Amen.